the farm has grown considerably in size. Uh, at this point now, it's 880 acres. The crops we grow are alfalfa, that's forage for our dairy farm. We have uh, corn for both silage and for grain. We grow soybeans and some winter wheat. I mentioned the dairy. We have 200 dairy cows on the site that we're on. We have another 57 to 59 cows on a tie stall operation. And in between here, there's some, but, but now this is gonna be fantastic. When this goes down over winter, the longer we're here, the more attached we become to it. It's not dirt. It's a living organism, a living, breathing thing that we can nurture and make better. I think the ethic of conservation was probably instilled by our parents. The practices have changed. It's the same thing if you're, if you're like the combine. Well, the first guy was great. The guy could just do combining. Well, when the next guy could give me all the yield data for the same price, I took the guy who could give me all the yield data. You see the steeper slopes on our farm. Uh, soil conservation is very important to the profitability, especially long-term profitability of any operation. So trying to keep that soil in place ultimately led us to using no-till. The more we can get away from disturbing that soil, the less erosion we're gonna have. That residue shielding our soil surface is gonna prevent it from drying out. Uh, the earthworm populations are gonna increase. You're gonna have a lot more life within that soil. We use less fuel, less labor, and less equipment to go with no-till. So no-till is really a win-win. In areas that are more sensitive, we will put in a cover crop. Cover crops, well, that's trying to keep something on that soil at all times. If we don't have a residue, for instance, like in a field where it's steeper and we took off corn silage, we, we get a cover crop on there so that as soon as that corn silage comes off, now we've taken one green crop off, we want something growing on there. That's gonna help hold the soil in place, gonna shield it from rainfall. That's the benefit in soil erosion. Now, again, we're adding organic matter by having something out there. And we're also helping the insect population, worm populations by keeping things out there. Also, if we apply manure, we're capturing those nutrients for use later on. We put in a lot of waterways. We want to minimize soil loss off of those fields. We want to build that soil up. We started hearing more about uh, goat prairie, natural prairie restoration, so forth. So we started experimenting with some of our sunny hillsides and looking at uh, recreating some of that native prairie habitat. You know, there's a whole, that much of it that's really getting to be some nice material. Sometimes we need help. And, and that's where uh, NRCS and land conservation and other groups can come in and help in, in certain instances with technical support and different things. They have to work for the farmer first. If the farmer can't implement it, or it's not reasonable, or ultimately maybe not even necessary, it's never going to work. But if the farmers can be at the table to be part of the rulemaking process, to be part of finding the technical programs that we can put in to teach, the different practices, that is so important. One of the greatest programs that I've ever had the fortune to be involved with was the Discovery Farms program. And uh, I have a special spot for that because a lot of times groups, organizations, people want to come out and tell the farmer what to do. Discovery Farms program came from a different angle and actually said, well, wait a minute, let's look at what the farmer is doing. I should write it down tonight. <laughs> Don't get ripped, but yeah. All right. Thanks. You bet. Have a good day. Yeah. They certainly use your, your local land conservation, your extension, talk to NRCS, but ultimately at the end, understand your farm. Understand how you impact soil and water quality. That doesn't mean everybody has to do what Joe Brager does or everybody has to do what someone else does, but they need to identify what's important on their land. It'd be certainly something that would be an honor and I would love for my children to see that. I would like them to see that you can be heavily invested and heavily involved in production agriculture, 
but that you can still be a very good steward of the soil and of the water. If we don't take care of this land, it's not going to sustain production. And, we, and we're always challenged to continually have greater yields, to have greater uh, production off of this land. And the, and the only way to do that is to build it up and to make it better and continuously improve that soil profile and soil life. So good stewardship of the land, the water, all the animals on this farm, us, all of us, we depend on having clean water. And that is all part of having good soil stewardship, good nutrient management practices so we don't have nutrients getting into this water.